I would love to swing on a tire swing, but for now it's time to paint. So let's get started. Trees are a fabulous thing to practice with watercolor. They create a lot of opportunity for you to practice creating value and changing up your color saturation, making it bright, light, dark, and everything in between. So for this, we'll be mainly focusing on our big piles of fluffy leaves at the top of our tree, but of course we'll talk about the other details and do the whole thing as well together. So first I'm going to mix up a bunch of different greens. I don't want to use plain green, I want to add things to it. So I mixed a little yellow with the green, mixed a little brown with the green, and I'm starting with a lot of water, a little bit of paint, and I'm spreading it around in one area of my tree. So we're gonna do one clump at a time to do our tree and we'll get better as we go. And you can always go back and tweak one later, but you wanna work while it's wet. So while I've got my big area full of water, I'm gonna drip in the next level of value. If your paper soaks up the water really quick, just be patient and add another layer. Once it's well saturated, that water should stay a little bit so that you can keep adding these values. Otherwise, it's not the end of the world if you end up creating layers of dry paint as well. That'll still have a nice texture and design to it. So now that I've got the main low lightest value, I'm adding another value with more browns, creating those shadows, and I'm going to slowly build up these layers with new different values. The more variety in green, the more interesting this clump of branches is going to look and the more realistic. Without actually painting every single leaf, I can still show that it's a very realistic tree by having a variety of values and tones of green. Try mixing up some different ones, try adding blue to your green, try adding brown or black to your green, do some experimenting. That's what this workbook is for, is trying new things, stepping out of your comfort zone and learning how to do it. We're going to go ahead and repeat those steps for all the other clumps of the tree. You might want to go back and add some more contrast. If you notice that once something dries, it dried really light, then you can always go back and add more shadows with a wet on dry, meaning that your paint is fresh and wet, but the paper is dry. It might create some hard edges, but that's okay because your leaves have shapes, they have edges. So go back and forth between your different areas so that you can build up that contrast and show where there's nice and dark and light areas. Let's finish our tree. Now it is time for our tree trunk. Uh, just kind of like when we're mixing greens for leaves and plants, we don't want all of the brown to look the same. So we can start with our plain brown, we're gonna water it down, um, but I might actually just stick it on top of some of the green in my paint palette, maybe add a little bit of black to it to just create some more interest. And then I'm gonna try to start lightly. So again, lots of water, not a lot of paint to really create that first uh, layer of paint. As we layer, we can make it darker, we can add texture, interesting lines, but you always wanna start lightly and then work darker from there. I'm trying to stay inside my lines, but if you have any accidents, you could turn them into a branch or a bump or something like that. There's really no way to go wrong when it's nature. All trees are unique and a little bit different. Fill the whole tree trunk with your first layer of light brown, paying attention at the bottom to how there's some roots that kind of stick out of the ground. Don't worry if you cover up some of those grassy lines. We'll come back and add that grass color later. You can just go, go right on top of it for now. For the darker shadows, I'm trying to mix up a more uh, opaque paint. So more paint, less water. I also added a little bit of black to it to darken it. And I'm gonna go in and find those edges that should have shadow. So right underneath the branches or under the, the leaves, that would see some shadows because the leaves are providing shade to the tree trunk. I'm also just gonna use my brush to draw a bunch of wiggly lines on the tree trunk. This is like the bark, the texture of how the tree grew. So those kind of random bumpy lines and swirls, those all help create that texture. And you can do that with a little bit of a darker value brown uh, that will make more variety in the browns of your tree trunk.
For the tire swing, I'm just using plain black, watering it down to make it a nice light gray at first so I can always make it darker. We'll want to create that shadow on the inside of the tire swing if we can to make it look more 3D. So the kind of the front of the tire swing can be a more medium gray and then we'll try to darken the inside. Some final details are the rope. I'm using just some really light brown gray to make the rope look a little more natural and realistic. And I'm gonna add a little bit of a grassy floor to the underneath the tree, which I'm gonna use a little bit of paint and use the dry brush effect where I kind of rub my brush on its side to create the texture and just brush it underneath the tree. I'm not looking for something exact. I just want to give the impression that there is bits of green on the ground underneath where the tree is. So not trying to fill anything in, just adding so that green, maybe paying attention to where those little triangles poke up to bits of grasses, fill those in. But otherwise, this is the final step. I hope you had a lot of fun practicing values of green, building up from light to dark to make this tree look realistic. You should be super proud and I will see you in the next one.